Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick at the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of 2 is equal to phi to the power of 2. Now, to solve this problem, I actually have two different methods. So, for my first method, First start with x to the power of 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to be dividing both sides by 5 to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of 2 minus 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now to solve something like this, I'm going to be using Important property algebra that says that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is going to equal x and b is going to equal 5. So x squared minus 5 squared. This is going to equal a plus b, so x plus 5, times a minus b, so x minus 5. So now if I replace this with x squared minus 5 squared, I get x plus 5 times x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now from this, I have two equations. I have x plus 5 is equal to 0, and I have x minus 5 is equal to 0. So now to solve this, let's first start with x plus 5 equals 0. So if x plus 5 equals 0, simply subtract 5 on both sides. These two cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to negative 5. And now if x minus 5 equals 0, I can add 5 on both sides. These two cancel out. And I'm left with x is equal to 5. Now for my second method, solving this problem. Start with x to the power of 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form x squared is equal to a, how would I solve this? Well, I would first take the square root on both sides, And then I'll be left with x is equal to the square root of a, but this is actually positive or negative. Because if you square a negative number, let's say negative 5, this is still going to end up being positive 25. So that's why the square root of number has both a positive and negative solution. So now for x squared equals 5 squared, to solve this, I'm going to be first taking the square root on both sides. So now I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 5 squared. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the square root of 25, and this is actually positive or negative. The square root of 25 is 5, so I have x is equal to positive or negative 5. So this is my answer. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64. Now, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the power of 4 on both sides. So I have x to the power of x to the power of 4. So the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And n times n, these two are interchangeable, meaning this is the same thing as a to the power of n times n. And if I can rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that I can rewrite a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of n. So to put this into simpler terms, 
a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of n. So for our equation here, I can think of x to the power of 4 here as m and 4 as n. So now, because I can switch these two places together, I'm going to get this x to the power of 4 to the power of x to the power of 4. Now this is equal to 64 to the power of 4. So all I did was I switched the places of x to the power of 4 and 4. Now, 64, this is the same thing as 8 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 4 to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 8 to the power of 2 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So a to the power of 2 to the power of 4, that's going to equal a to the power of 2 times 4. And 2 times 4, that's obviously equal to 8. So I have 8 to the power of 8. Now I'm going to let y equal x to the power of 4. So now if I replace y for x to the power of 4, I get y to the power of y is equal to 8 to the power of 8. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 8. Now remember how we set y equals 4 to x to the power of 4. So now that we know that y is equal to 8, I have x to the power of 4 is equal to 8. Now to solve this, I'm going to be taking the fourth root on both sides. So now these two are going to cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to positive or negative fourth root of 8. So that is my answer. All right, so I have x to the power of 2 thirds is equal to 16. So right here, I actually want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with x to the power of 2 thirds is equal to 16. Now I'm going to be taking the power of 3 over 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 2 thirds to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So in this case, x to the power of 2 thirds to the power of 3 over 2, that's going to be the same thing as x to the power of 2 thirds times 3 over 2. This is equal to 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, 2 thirds and 3 over 2 these two are reciprocals, meaning if we multiplied them, we would get 1, because if you multiply two reciprocals, you get 1. So let's test this out. 2 thirds times 3 over 2, 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6. So I have 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. So now I have x to the power of 1 is equal to 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, x to the power of 1 is the same thing as x, so I have x is equal to 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, to simplify this, 16 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. So now I have x is equal to 6, or sorry, 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 3 over 2, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 4 times 3 over 2. And now 4 times 3 over 2, this is the same thing as 4 over 1 times 3 over 2. 4 times 3 is 12, and 1 times 2 is 2, so 12 over 2, which is equal to 6. So now I have x is equal to 2 to the power of 6. And 2 to the power of 6, well... 2 to the power of 1, this is equal to 2. 2 to the power of 2, this is equal to 4. 
2 to the power of 3, this is equal to 8. 2 to the power of 4, this is equal to 16. 2 to the power of 5, this is equal to 32. So notice how it doubles every time. So 2 to the power of 6 would be double of 32, which is going to equal 64. So I have x is equal to 64. Now to check, my original equation was x to the power of 2 over 3 is equal to 16. Now that we know that x is equal to 64, I have 64 to the power of 2 over 3 is equal to 16. Now, 64 to the power of 2 over 3, this is the same thing as 64 to the power of 2. Actually, it's the same thing as the cube root of 64 to the power of 2. And now this is equal to 16. Now, the cube root of 64 to the power of 2, well, to do that, I first have to find the value of 64 to the power of 2. And 64 to the power of 2, that's going to equal 4,096. So now I have the cube root of 4,096. And now the cube root of 4,096, this is actually equal to 16. So I have 16 is equal to 16, meaning our answer is right.